Hey everybody, it's Kara, and today we're going to make mini cherry cheesecake. I don't know how you feel about cheesecake, but it is probably my favorite dessert out of everything. I'm going to put the link to the recipe I used in the description. It's not my recipe, so I didn't write it, so I'm not going to take credit for it, but it is a really good recipe. It actually ends up making less than what the recipe says, unless I did it wrong, which is a possibility, but it was still good. Anybody else have trouble with cupcake liners? It's like an act of Congress to get them just to get one cupcake liner out of the, out of the whole bundle here. I always have trouble with them. And I'm working with real vanilla wafers this time and not the store brand. So yeah, we're getting fancy here. I think I could eat these cookies, just the whole box, just all in one sitting. They're really good if you eat them with peanut butter. If you like peanut butter, of course, you just spread a little peanut butter on them, and then eat the whole box. <laughs> you could probably do this in a more complicated way, and make a real graham cracker crust, but I didn't want to do all that. And I think that I actually prefer the taste of the vanilla wafers more than the graham crackers. They don't seem as dry. You know how sometimes the graham cracker crust can kind of get a little dry? These were a little bit sweeter and they just didn't have that dry taste to them, so I think I like these better.
and I'm still moving forward here and putting vanilla wafers in each of these as if I'm going to be making this many when it only made one pan. But recipe for banana pudding on the side. I really, I really want to make this. My only problem is I am allergic to raw bananas. If you put them in banana bread or like a banana cake and they're baked, I don't seem to have much problem. But unfortunately, if they're not cooked and they're just cut up in, in a banana pudding, I can't eat them. As always, I'm folding up the wrappers. I don't know why I do that. cheese that's not really cold so set it out I don't know maybe 20 minutes or so or 30 minutes before you make this because if it's cold and you try to mix it up it sort of clumps up on you or lumps up on you I guess and it just doesn't get very smooth it's harder to mix up and get smooth I sometimes feel like the bags are so much louder than everything else, but I think the sounds are nice, so I always want to lean again, but you let me know if it, if it ever sort of jolts you awake when the bag starts to open and close.
why I always crack my eggs into a bowl first. I don't want to eat cheesecake with pieces of eggshell in it. Tablecloth. This waist tablecloth. I guess it's not lace. It's more like a crochet. This was my mom's tablecloth. Well, it's sort of nostalgic for me. I'll tell you a story. When I was a kid growing up, I I loved cheesecake so much, and anytime that I made, you know, straight A's in school, or I made the A, B, on a roll, we could get a prize, that was my mom's thing, you get a prize, and usually she would go, I don't know where she found these, but she would go and find all these fun little pencils and erasers and little pens and fun map colors and stuff like that, and she'd make us a little, I guess, kind of like a care package, and it was like a goodie bag, I should say. So, you know, when she, when we'd bring her report cards home or something like that, she next the next day we would have these little goodie packages, and and we also got to tell her some other prize that we wanted. And my sister was, and she was always a tomboy, so she always wanted like match cars or some kind of racing track or. Who knows what, but I, I didn't want anything other than cheesecake, so she always made this cheesecake with lemon jello in it, and it was kind of like a no-bake cheesecake. It was really good, and I always asked for, for her to make that for me, and I always specifically said cherry cheesecake because I really... I had this thing for cherries when I was a kid. I was anything with cherry flavor. I was on it. So I always wanted cherry filling on the top. So that was my thing. That was what I would get for making all A's. <laughs> it didn't take much for me to be motivated to study and make A's. I guess all it took is cheesecake. I think maybe the filling for this would, I think it would go into these little cupcake liners a little better had I used a spoon or maybe two spoons, you know, one spoon to kind of add it and then the other spoon to sort of scrape the batter off of the first spoon, but I kind of went with this method, so I guess it worked okay. Um, I think maybe you, in the original recipe, you don't really, you're not really supposed to fill them all the way to the top, but I did, and the reason I did is because, you know, cheesecakes, sometimes they kind of fall in the middle, and they don't, it's not like they bake up like a cupcake where they're super puffy, they're usually sort of flat on the top, so I went ahead and filled these all the way up, and maybe that's where I went wrong and why I only used, ended up using one pan, but I don't know. I think 
think they did work out though, filling it up all the way. There was still room. They puffed up a little bit when they baked, but then they flattened out and there was still room to put a filling on the top. And I'm just a big fan of cherries, so it's not like you have to use cherry filling or anything on the top. You can just leave them plain. I like them plain too. Basically, I think I would eat any kind of cheesecake except for chocolate. I don't know what it is, but I just have this aversion to chocolate cheesecake for some reason. It just feels like it doesn't go together. I don't really know. I don't really know why. I think that, but I'm just not a fan of it. So here I am on the walk of shame and putting my vanilla wafers back in the box because, you know, these are brand new vanilla wafers and you don't waste those. I, I will go back and eat these, I promise. So I got this cute little apple timer and it's just fun. <laughs> it's the little things, I think. This video I filmed during the day. Sometimes I film at night. Sometimes I film, it, film during the day. And this one just happened to be during the day. You can see the light from the window back there. But I don't know what the deal was, but every rooster was crowing all day in the neighborhood. <laughs> and every dog was barking and everyone mowed their yard and every loud truck drove down the street in the neighborhood. So yeah, that was that was filming day on this one. And after this one I thought, no, I'm just gonna start doing them all at night or as many as I can at night. Because yeah, I it was so frustrating. Normally, um, the neighborhood is pretty quiet, but that day, I don't know, everybody was busy. So, I don't know if you're a coffee or a tea drinker. I'll drink both, as long as it doesn't have any caffeine in it. Um, I'm already kind of, it probably doesn't sound like it, but I am already kind of amped up anyway. In general, I kind of have a lot of energy, so I don't need to really add any to my day. Um, so I just drink the herbal teas and things like that, and I really like this warming vanilla. It's really good. It's just, I don't really know why they call it warming. Maybe there's some kind of other ingredient in there that makes it, I don't know, maybe some ginger or something like that. But it's just a nice light flavor of vanilla. And I'm reading this book that was given to me as a gift. It's really a pretty motivational book to slow down. I think it's called The Gifts from the Sea. But it's really all about slowing down 
and paying attention to the small details. Just being more present in what you're doing right at that moment. Instead of thinking about everything else that is going on or has gone on or will go on. It's just nice to sort of clear your mind a little bit and think about just what's right in front of you, like a hot cup of tea, a nice book, candles, and of course cheesecake that is baking in the oven. You can see that they kind of flattened out a little bit and they kind of sink down a little further here in the middle but I think that's kind of ideal because it leaves a little bit of room like a nice little area or pocket for any filling that you want to put on top and I, I really I don't know if you've ever tried cheesecake that has the caramel on it, but that's really good too. So putting a teaspoon or so of caramel on him in the middle of each one would be good. I mean, not in combination with the cherries, but just by itself, I think that would be really good. Or just using some whipped cream, that would be good too. I could have gotten fancy and made my own cherry filling, but, you know, once you make cheesecakes and they're ready to eat, you're just like, I just want to eat them. I don't want to spend any more time <laughs> making a fancy filling. I'm just ready. like I'm being extra picky here, but it feels like I want to get the right ratio of cherry filling to cheesecake. You know, you don't want too much cherry pie filling on the top because then it overpowers the amount of cheesecake. You know, it's, it's really the these important things in life, right? This is my favorite time. The taste testing time. I wish that I could have you over for our company and we could sit and eat our cheesecakes and drink our tea and read our motivational books together. <laughs> that would be fun. I have a feeling that I would just want to talk and not read anything, which I think would probably be okay with most people. These were really good and soft. They, even though they were baked, they weren't too dense. They were still really soft and creamy.
So I'm going to read some more of my book here and eat some more of my cheesecake. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you in the next